Mark Starr from thehopper.com. Uh, so in lieu of doing a beer review today, um, I really wanted to kind of do a cellaring beer video for you. Uh, believe it or not, I get quite a few questions from people that want to know things like, hey Mark, what types of beers can I cellar? Uh, what kind of temperatures do you recommend? Things like that. So um, I thought we would really go over five topics today. In fact, I've written them down here. Uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is shelving. Uh, and then we're going to talk about temperature um, and really what's required in that uh, department. Lighting is also something that we will talk about. Uh, finally, we'll talk about the types of beer that you can sell. Her. Um, and then finally, we'll talk about how you can label certain bottles if needed. So let's start off with shelving. Um, this shelf is just a basic, you know, black. Uh, rack that I bought at Target, and I think it was about $45 to $50, so, um, you know, not too expensive. Um, it's definitely something you can pick up, you know, pretty easily, and I think uh, we assembled this in probably about a half an hour, so um, if you find that you get home and you put bottles on your shelves, though, uh, and the bottles start to wobble a little bit, or maybe the uh, shelves are not, you know, completely uh, flat or even, uh, or level, I should say, make sure you buy some pieces of, you know, plywood, have them cut to fit uh, the size of the shelf, um, and then that way you make sure that the surface is level. Fortunately, I haven't had any spills yet, so I haven't really gone uh, to that extreme. But um, uh, now let's talk about temperature. You know, a lot of people will tell you that your uh, cellaring temperature should be 48 to 52 degrees. Um, I'll agree that that's optimal, but I don't know many folks who have basements uh, where the temperature is 48 to 52 degrees. Mine certainly isn't. Um, in fact, what, one of the things that I recommend you do uh, is go out and buy one of these uh, temperature gauges that you can leave sitting down where your beer is so you know what the temperature is. Uh, mine's reading about 63 to 64 degrees right now. So um, while it's quite a bit above the 58 to, or the 48 to 52 range, uh, it's also well below 72, um, and even higher than that, which, you know, you go to some liquor stores and, you know, maybe the beer's sitting near the uh, heating elements, whatnot. So I think really making sure that your temperature is at a constant um, temperature is really the best thing to do. Again, this is my basement, and it's usually around 64, uh, even as low as 62 degrees uh, when it gets a lot colder outside. But... Um, I definitely recommend that if you have your shelves next to um, an air vent, that especially in the winter time, you close that vent up. Um, I would even go a step further and just, just don't put your shelf uh, near any air vents. In fact, ours are up in the ceiling and in the winter time, um, I shut those things off as tightly as I can uh, to keep it as cold as I can down here in the basement and really to push all that heat air, uh, that heat upstairs anyway. Um, so in terms of lighting, uh, you know, lighting is very important, and by lighting being very important, I mean the lack of lighting. Uh, you really want to keep sunshine, uh, fluorescent lighting, any kind of light away from your beer as much as possible. Now, you know, I have lights on in here right now, and that's just because if I didn't, you wouldn't be able to see me on camera. But, um, you know, generally, you want to make sure that um, if you do have windows in the room that you're going to build your cellar, uh, you want to make sure that you move that shelving uh, as far away from that lighting as possible, or just make sure that you have, you know, really good blinds and maybe put a curtain over it. Uh, but in general, you know, the darker it is, um, the better it is. So uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is the types of beer that you can sell her. Um, I think this is one of the most important topics. Uh, it's the one that I get questions on the most. Um, the first type of beer that you can sell her very easily um, are your Imperial Stouts. Uh, this is the Firestone Walker Parabola, and I think it's about 13% ABV, so that's something that's really going to last um, at least five to seven years. I don't know that people have been cellaring these, um, you know, enough lately or enough over the last few years uh, to really know how long these will last. But for right now, um, I think at least five to seven years is a really good amount of time to keep uh, those Imperial Stouts. Uh, the Perfect Storm is the next one I have here, which is a big barley wine. Uh, barley wines, too, are generally very high in ABV, um, so I think those are really good to, um, you know, sell for a good amount of time. 
the next one that I have here, the Smutty Nose Gravitation, uh, that is a quadruple. Um, again, really high ABV on that one. I think that one may be around 11 to 13 percent. Um, they actually don't call it out on the bottle, so I'm going off of memory. But, um, you know, quadruples are also really good uh, to age because they do have an, a high ABV. One style that I don't have here um, is an Icebox. Icebox are generally, you know, anywhere from 13 up to 20, 21 percent. And those will definitely do really well in your basement. Um, kind of contrary to what we've been talking about in terms of ABV, uh, the Cantillons, uh, you know, things like Sour Ales, Lambics, Goozes, American Wild Ales, um, they generally run about 5 to 7, sometimes 8%. So while they're not as high ABV as a barley wine uh, or an Imperial Stout, um, they do have that bacteria and those yeasts in there uh, that will really allow those to live for a long time. In fact, I have seen on some Goose bottles um, that they recommend aging it for up to 25 to 30 years. So, uh, yeah, those sours, in fact, that's one of the reasons why I've been collecting sours so much lately, um, is that I really like the cellaring potential that they have. Uh, one that I wanted to call out specifically here uh, is the New Glarus Wisconsin Belgian Red. Um, now, if you do a little bit of research on that one, you'll find that it's actually a 4% beer, um, which is quite low. But there's one thing on this beer uh, that really kind of tells you that it can be cellared, and that's that the brewery uh, put, you know, placed this wax dripping over the top. Generally, if they go through that process, um, that means that it's something that can be aged for a fairly long time. I wouldn't recommend aging you know, this beer specifically for you know, more than five years. In fact, I probably wouldn't let that one go for more than about three um, but usually when you see that wax, and that's really the only reason why I set that one out here, um, when you see that wax, that's usually a really good, um, you know, indicator of a beer that you can sell her. And then finally, I wanted to talk about IPAs. Um, IPAs and uh, Imperial IPAs, Pale Ales, anything that is really hop forward where, you know, the hops um, are really kind of the, the key element of the beer, those should really never be... Uh, cellared. In fact, I have my campaign fridge of the hops. Um, you know, something like Dogfish Head's 120 minute, it's kind of an exception because it does have 21% ABV. Um, I think if you were to, you know, taste that beer over time, you'll see that the hop characters really do start to change. Um, you know, it's going to last for quite a long time. Um, so I wouldn't be too concerned with putting a 120 minute uh, IPA in the refrigerator. When you talk about things like Surly Furious, uh, Bell's Hop Slam, for example, uh, Firestone Walker's Union Jack, any IPA or really hop forward beer, um, you should really put those in the refrigerator as soon as you get them, and drink them as soon as you can because they really start to um, lose those hop characters over time. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about is bottle labeling. Um, a lot of times uh, you know, breweries are really good, and I'll use the uh, Dark Lord, for example, here. You know, it's got the green wax on the top. Um, a lot of breweries will do specific colors of wax every year, uh, just so that you know what year that beer came from. A lot of times, you know, breweries are very good about putting the bottling dates on their labels or bottles. Um, hell, some of them even go so far as to put a enjoy by date on there, cause, so you can kind of tell... Um, how long they intend that beer to be cellared. But, you know, one of the things that, you know, you run into from time to time is that some breweries uh, just don't do a very good job of labeling their beers. Um, I'm going to use this KBS as an example. Uh, when you buy these, generally uh, founders bottles have the dates on them right around the neck here. Um, but KBS, for some reason, is one of those beers that doesn't. Um, so when I have those and I want to make sure I remember what year those are from, uh, you can actually go out and buy one of these uh, paint sharpies. And if you're not familiar with them, uh, they're basically those pens that you know make that noise when you shake them. But um, anyway, what I do is if you know when I get a four pack, a six pack, or even a big bottle, um, and I know when I bought that or I know when that year was, um, I just on the bottom I'll write the year. Um, that way, you know, I've seen people write it on the front of the bottle, and if that's your preference, hey, knock yourself out. Um, but I generally write them on the bottom. That way, um, you know, two, three years down the road, 
um, I'll really remember uh, when those beers came from. So that's really just a high level overview of you know how I sell or my beer. Um, I'm sure other people have their ways and you know that's great. Whatever works for you uh, is, is great. Uh, this is more of a guide. This is just how I do mine. I'm not you know overly compulsive about it, but um, you know I do try to keep the light out. Uh, I try to keep the temperatures cool down here. Um, really keep them away from traffic. You know, you don't want people bumping them. But other than that, really, that's uh, kind of the basics. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Just leave me a comment down below, um, and I will go ahead and try to answer those for you as quickly as possible. Uh, but that's it for today. My name is Mark Starr, and we'll see you later. Bye.